Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a quick uh, diagnosis of a problem that's occurring in a brand new Lionel engine that was just released. It's the uh, Strasburg number 89. It's a 260 Mogul engine and uh, really cool little engine, great paint scheme and everything, but uh, it's having a problem. It's derailing on every fast track switch it runs through. So we're going to look at the problem, uh, diagnose it, and then we're going to come up with a resolution for it. So uh, let's get into this because I want this thing running correctly. All right, guys, so here's the engine in question right here. Like I said, it's a 260 Mogul. It's a really nice little engine with the paint scheme. I really like it, but uh, yeah, I can't run it on my layout through my fast track switches because it derails on every single switch. So let's go look at the switch and I'll show you what's happening. So here's one of my fast track switches, which it derails on every single time when it comes through it. And it's more pronounced or has more derailments when the switch is set to the curved position as opposed to the straight position. But it can, it actually derailed on both positions, but it always derails on the curved position. So, <clears throat> so I watched it and I, unfortunately I didn't videotape that part because, uh, after four derailments, I didn't want to try it again and press my luck because the sparks, you know, coming off of it and everything uh, were, you know, just making me cringe. <clears throat> so basically, I um, I pushed it through by hand, and even when I pushed it through by hand, it would derail. So what's happening is, uh, as the pilot truck is coming through here, it follows the curve exactly like it's supposed to. But the driver, the front driver in particular, that has the traction tire on it... <clears throat> comes in and it actually picks the points on the switch here and then it goes gets squeezed in between here and then of course it tries to go straight and the whole thing derails right you can actually see some burn marks here on the switch from it and stuff where it sparked and you know because it's jamming itself through this point right here it also like scuffs up the inside of the uh, wheel <clears throat> and so basically, uh, when I was pushing it through and I was watching it, I could tell that um, the driver, the wheel, is riding too high on the rail and there's very little flange left on the wheel to go through the switch. So instead of the flange being farther down inside the track, right, it's riding super high and because of that, that very thin edge of the drive wheel is riding so high, it's enough to come in and actually pick the point on the switch and then move the switch over a little bit because these switches, of course, don't lock, right? And so the train comes in and it jams itself in between here and then derails. And that's the problem. So <clears throat> when you look at the flange on the wheel, which we'll look at in a second, you'll see that it looks very shallow, like there's not enough of the wheel flange. So that's what's causing it to derail. But why is there enough? Why is there not enough wheel flange? Like this is a Lionel engine. I would have expected Lionel to test it on their track, not only their track but their switches. So I don't know if they're just testing on their uh, track in a loop, and they're not actually running trains through switches. But they absolutely should be if they're not running their uh, trains as they're testing them through their own switches because if they don't make it through their own switches they certainly could have problems with other manufacturer switches too so that's the main issue so let's go ahead and look at the actual drive wheels and you'll see what I'm talking about alright so our fix for this or our attempted fix anyway to see if it's gonna fix it is going to be to replace the traction tires that Lionel has put on here which are much thicker uh, than they should be for this rim with some MTH traction tires. So this part number is D as in dog, E as in Edward, and then there's five zeros, two five. Uh, so I got this from uh, Gunrunner John on the OGR forum. He uh, put the part number in a post that I put out there about this problem I was having, and he recommended that... Um, this might be a possible solution to fix the issue because I guess on the previous moguls that Lionel released it had sort of the same kind of issue so um, so yeah on the OGR forum Gunrunner John gave me this part number so I went on the MTH website and I found them they're dollar fifty a piece for each uh, traction tire or I think there's like uh, there's a set of five or something for seven fifty or something uh, but 
you know, unfortunately you have to pay $10 in shipping uh, to get these little pieces sent to you. So, you know, it was about, uh, you know, I ordered some extras. So I, I ordered four extras on top of the two since I was ordered, I had to pay $10 shipping anyway. So I figured why not? So I got six of them. Um, so, um, you know, cost me, you know, 20 bucks or so to get traction tires uh, for this engine. So, um, but MTH parts, just as a side note, fantastic. You go on their website, you order their part, it shipped the next day, and it was here in two days, right? And so that was here ready to go. So anyway, that is going to be our attempted fix to see if it will fix this engine uh, by putting the MTH traction tires on, which are uh, much thinner than the um, Lino ones. And when I say thinner, I'm talking about the thickness of the actual uh, tire itself. Uh, the size basically is uh, pretty much identical. So um, luckily I have the OGR form and people like uh, Gunrunner John and stuff on there to help uh, with this kind of stuff. Because honestly, I mean, there's all kinds of traction tires out there on the MTH website. I wouldn't have known which exact part number to pick. So, but um, I'll put the part number in the video here. So in case you guys need it too, uh, you can um, know which ones to get. But that's what we're going to do. Here. So if we look at the um, sort of the drive wheel here, let's zoom in on it, you can kind of see um, there's not much flange in the front here because the ru uh, rubber traction tire right there is sort of uh, sticking out past the rim, right? Which I kind of would expect it to, like it, so it doesn't ride on the rim, but the problem is the flange on the outside here is not big enough for these wheels if you're going to have a traction tire that sticks below it so that's you know kind of annoying uh that that wasn't accounted for when they made the drive wheels so, so to replace this traction tire what we're going to do is we're going to we basically turn the wheels so that the side rods are all lined up straight across here and then we're going to take out this bolt right here which I've already loosened out so we're just going to take that out of the way and we're going to put it aside here okay so now that we have this drive rod loose right here um, if you look over here on the here we got to just move this out of the way so that we can get the nut driver on this uh, nut right here so this doesn't come out of the cross head here so you just have to sort of just uh, make sure you can get the nut driver on there, which it should fit in there, I think. It's a little, it's a little tight, but hopefully we can get this in here. Let me push this up a little bit here. Hold on. Get this all the way up front here. And then move this wheel a little bit. Now get this out of the way here. Okay, now we can get the nut driver on here. All right, so we got our nut out there, so that's that one. And now we can move this side rod out of the way. So now we should be able to get our traction tire off, right? And we're just going to get a little pick and see if we can't uh, pull that off. So just get underneath the tire here. It is a pretty thick tire, actually. I see it. I'm going to just pull that up above the rim here. Okay, and almost there, and there it is. Okay, so we have our traction tire off. And we're gonna open up our MTH ones here. So here's the uh, MTH one, here's the Lionel one. I don't know if you can see, they're quite different in thickness right there, so. Uh, let's see and the width looks about the same so we'll see so we got to get this on to here which of course this is the hardest part right getting it around the edges of the wheel and uh, pulling it around so we'll pull it around yank it around and get it mounted on here and then we'll come back 
All right, I got my new MTH traction tire on here. It fits uh, much better inside the rim. Doesn't stick out quite as much as the uh, Line L one does. So all I gotta do is put my bolt back here and then here and then flip it over to the other side and do the same thing. All right, so there we go. We've got our uh, new MTH traction tires on which rest very uh, deep inside the groove or actually probably no dip deeper but it's just that these are so thick um, so they actually fit pretty pretty well there so um, I'm getting a little more sort of flange here that hopefully will resolve our issue but we're gonna put it on the track and find out if this is gonna solve it or not um, so uh, I basically used three picks right when I'm putting it on so I start on the one side and then once I hold it with my finger and I take another pick, pull it around to here and I leave the pick sort of sitting there and then I take the other one and stretch it way around and then the big uh, tricky part is getting it between the brake shoe and the, uh, the wheel. But once you play with it, it's pretty good. So these are pretty easy to replace only because you only have to take out those two bolts right here and um, just slide, the, uh, slide it all the way up to the front of the crosshead guide and just you know take the driver and just hang it down out of the way so you can get to the driver on this one I'm sure there's a way you can get this whole crosshead guide section off but it looks pretty complicated it looks like you got to take off the whole gearbox assembly and everything I'm not going through all that so uh, it's a little finicky but once you uh, play with it you'll be able to get it and then it should be okay so and that's it we have our two traction tires and I'll just make sure you move it around and make sure there you don't see any it's not twisted and it's all seated on both sides and if it looks good then you're ready to test it so we're gonna put this on the layout here and give it a shot and see what happens all right guys so here's uh, one of the switches that I was going through it always was derailing on so um, I'm gonna have it right net it's set to the curve position right now so it's gonna go this way and uh, we'll see what happens so I'm gonna back it up and then I'm just gonna bring it up to sort of normal speed not crazy speed but I'm just gonna bring it up to normal speed I'm gonna watch it go through this switch here and we're gonna see if the uh, MTH traction tires solve my issue or if we still have a problem all right so here we go So it made it through our first switch without issue. So I'm going to run it around the layout here through a couple other switches and see if it still has an issue. And we just got lucky on that one or if it's actually a problem. So uh, let me uh, get some other, let me get it going here through some other switches. Coming up on our second switch here and our third is right after it right here. So. So you saw it, go, it went through two more switches, which this one right here, uh, it would derail on every single time. So it made it through that one. Uh, we have one right here. Let me back this up right here. And let's see if it makes it through this one. Now remember, it's it's always when it's set to the curve position that it has the problem. So, so we made it through that one too. So far, we made it through four switches. We're gonna bring it around here um, and. Uh, Bring it through this switch. This was another one it derailed on when it's in the curved position. So let's we'll see what happens here. We're gonna bring it up a little faster. So another switch 
watch it made it through without an issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it around the layout. I'm gonna give it a good run uh, around the layout through all the different switches, both directions, and we're gonna check it out and see if we still have a problem. All right, so we're gonna run through these switches here. Here's one right here. going to have to run through. No problem. Here's one. It's going to have to run through one there. So just ran through two switches there. Come around the back here. So it's going to come around here and we're going to run it through a switch right here. Okay, no problem. We're going to run through a switch right here. It's going through every single switch now perfectly. It hasn't derailed once. And I'm running it at a pretty good clip too. So. on all the switches and everything's working perfectly. So I can conclude at this point that this is fixed. Alright guys, so uh, we got our little uh, 260 mogul fixed here, which is great news because I really didn't want to have to return this engine. But to be honest with you, I almost did because I was getting really frustrated with it uh, derailing on every single fast track switch it was going through. I mean, it's a Lionel engine and it should be going through Lionel fast track switches without a problem. So I, it makes me question sometimes uh, how they're actually checking some of these things. Like, are they actually using it just on loops? Or are they actually running these engines through switches? So the 90, which is the Strasbourg 90 due out, hopefully this year, uh, I hope is not going to have similar issues because this engine only costs seven hundred and twenty dollars the 90 is nineteen hundred dollars and for a nineteen hundred dollar engine it better run through fast track switches without an issue so um, hopefully they're testing that out if they're watching this video if you haven't tested it out you need to test it through fast track switches because if a Lionel product can't run through its own switches that's probably a big issue so uh, but anyway, we managed by using MTH parts to fix our 89 here. So now it runs through my layout, as you saw in the video, through every single switch without a problem. No derailing anymore, which is good news because I really like this little engine and the paint scheme on it. Uh, so I didn't want to have to return it and uh, not have it in my collection. So. so anyway, um, I hope this video will help you if you happen to buy one of these moguls. And by the way, it's not just in the 89. Uh, Metka made a uh, special run of these in another uh, livery. 
So if you have it, it's the same mobile engine, so you might have the same issue depending on your layout. I know there were a couple of reports from other people with fast track layouts that had it, but uh, there was, I think, another report with somebody with raw switches was also having an issue. Um, also, uh, my fellow YouTuber RBP Trains had texted me and let me know that he was having the same issue on his layout through the fast track switches too. So, uh, pretty much we were all having the same issue, and luckily the MTH traction tires, because they're thinner, resolved this issue and now everything works perfectly on it. Not really happy, I had to uh, pay extra money to buy traction tires, the shipping for traction tires, and then take this apart, put new traction tires on it, and go through all that stuff when you know I paid you know nice chunk of change for this engine, but luckily it is resolvable and it's a pretty easy quick fix, luckily, uh, that uh, if you really like this engine like I do, then you can keep it and still have it in your collection. So, so anyway, that is uh, today's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you put your comments down below if you have any. And I will see you guys next time. Peace, guys.